brightest day. The blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light! Hey guys, it's Star Sky, and welcome to my Earth DPS video to do with um, a Might DPS loadout. Yes, you heard it right, Pure Might DPS loadout. Now, and I have named this loadout the Earthquake loadout, just for the fact for those that most of the animations consider, you know, using Rock and the Supercharge is Earthquake itself. So, let's go straight to loadout. And simply, this loadout um, incorporates a lot of damage over time and it is also very good for single targets and multiple targets, which I'll go through later on. So, we have Rumble Crush. Summons a huge rock, and you throw it at your enemies, it does instant damage, and applies the crushing effect. Debris Field. Anything within the AoE takes um, damage and damage over time. Striker Stones. Um, summons two great big boulders, slams it in an area, anything in that area takes damage and damage over time while the crush effect is applied. Shards, frontal AoE, instant damage and applies damage on um, damage over time to anything that has the crush effect on it. So, you know, obviously you're going to be aiming at stuff, so this is very good. Sandblast, now since it's a pure might loadout, this, da this skill is going to do a load of damage. It does two hits, so the first hit, say, could be like a 1.5k crit, and the, the last hit could be like 2.5-3.5k crits. You know, the damage is crazy. And Earthquake. Now, for people who like frown and go, ugh, why Earthquake? Simply put, the, with the changes that you can't duel people now in raids to build up Supercharge, I'm looking to try and use a Supercharge which I can use more frequently, which does nice damage and you know plus for this one it does apply damage over time to the target or targets in the area and also with the supercharges if you don't want to use it on a you know a sect of ads or a boss you can let it build up and you can make the most out of it and apply the aftershock into power interaction which basically you it three times and it will cause additional damage to enemies within the area or to the target Plus it will inflict burn as well, so it has multiple uses and it's really easy to get since it's a 25% supercharge. So it makes up considerably a very good supercharge to use. So, now to the rotation and then I'll go to the power points. So let's see, Rumble Crush, pick up, throw it, Debris Field, Strike and Stones, and Charge front um, for multiple AoE ones, and then Sand Blast for single targets. I will go into the rotation shortly after I've gone through the powerpoints and then I'll go through the whole load rotation guide for you. So let's go to Geokinesis Tree. And first of all, we have powerpoints in Earth and Grip, Strike and Stones, Shards, Debris Field, and Rumble Crush. And in Seismic we have Stone, Earthquake, Localized Tremor, Unstoppable, and Sandblast. And in Iconic Powers, we've put points in Weapons Expert, Tactical Genius. Now, it's very important to have a power point in Super Strength. Now, the reason why for it is we want to make the most out of the damage we get from Rumble Crush. Super Strength will increase the base and the crit damage you get from Rumble Crush. The Rumble damage from Rumble Crush does not split. So instead of throwing it at one target and getting 800, if you throw it at multiple targets, it could hit all the targets for the same damage. So you want to make the most out of that, so put it in super strength to increase the damage. And then with the two power points left over, Pacific, now this is how I put them, you can put them anywhere else you feel like it. I put them in Nano Weave Armor and Power of Resistance, um, just to help increase my survivability. Yes, it is a very tiny amount. But anything I can do to increase my survivability for all T5 content, I will do it. So that's how I expect it. So now let's get to the good stuff and get to the rotations behind this loadout. First of all, I will go through and I will say the weapon I specifically find the best for this loadout is dual wield. 
And now for the people who are like thinking, why is a melee weapon? Yes, it is a melee weapon. But dual wield is heavily underrated for its range attack. Now, as I will show you, the range attack. Now, I'm doing a 1.66k crit without any damage modifier on. Imagine what the damage would be like if I abuse any damage modifier. You'd be getting like 2.5k crits on single targets if you're pure might. And on the multiple targets, the damage does split, but since you'll be, since you'll be using this in between the rotation, the damage will be building up more than what it would be if you weren't using it as part of a rotation. So it's good for single target and it's good for multiple targets. <clears throat> so let's go for the multiple target um, rotation first. So of course, is, so of course the single target, but you know, the one in front of me think it's a big group of ads, you know, all that kind of stuff. So of course for multiple target, AOE rotation is going to be Rumble Crush, and then Tectonic, straight in to Strike and Stones, and then we're going to do the dual wield range attack clipped with shards three times. Now why three times four? It's because that will allow the cooldown time on Debris Field to finish, allowing us to reapply the whole rotation all over again. So, but watch for yourselves. Rumble Crush, pick up throw, Debris Field, Strike and Stones, jump to clip it, Dual wield range attack, shard. Dual wield range attack, shard. Dual wield range attack, shard. Pick up Rumble Crush, ready to throw it. And as you can see, debris field is now ready for us to use. Simple rotation, highly effective. Does a lot of instant damage and a lot of damage over time. Especially since you've been incorporating dual wield range attack as part of your rotation. I have actually tested this in T5 content in Nexus and in the Ops. The damage is really good and it's a lot of fun. Especially with all the animations of slamming rocks, of enemies between boulders, chucking rocks and stuff, you know. And even um, slamming your foot on the foot and slamming, um, slamming you know, um, stones into your enemies. So once again, for the AoE rotation, Rumble Crush, Free Field, Striking Stones, Dual Wield Range Attack three times. One, two, three. Pick up Rumble Crush, ready to throw it. And as you can see, Debris Field is ready again to be used. It's just nice chucking a great big stone at something, it's just so good fun. So that is the multiple AoE one. Now for the single target when it comes to like your bosses. So for the bosses it's going to be Rumble Crush, Debris Field, Striker Stones, Dual Wield Range Attack clipped with Shard once, and then Dual Wield Range Attack clipped with Sand Blast twice. And in that time, Debris Field would have finished. So Rumble Crush. Clip, debris field, striking stones, dual wield, into shards, dual wield, sand blast, dual wield, sand blast, and then, as you see, debris field finished. So, as single target, it works. So, once again, rumble crush, debris field, striking stones, jump to clip it, dual wield, shards. Dual wield, sand blast. Dual wield, sand blast, and rumble crush. And your raids start all over again. So as you can see, simple but effective, very rotation. Now the good points to this rotation for is it's mostly range. The only skill that is mid ranged is shards. Now you, whoops, sorry, that is striking stones. So, as you can see, even from here, Shards actually has a quite a nice bit of range, so you don't need to be too close to it. But if you notice, right, I'll tap lock onto the target. If you notice with Shards, I am actually moving forward as I'm doing it. So, when using Shards, 
um, make sure to re um, move back. So when you've done when you've done the combo three times, make sure to move back because you could end up too close to the ads or even a boss and put your group well put yourself in harm's way and make things difficult for your group to revive you if you end up going down. But uh, even if it's a, even if you do see a big juicy ad and it's on low in HP. You wouldn't have to apply the dots, you could just simply just do the dual wield into Sandblast just to get some really good damage in and finish that add off. And then of course we've got our supercharge. See, it did damage of 300 and 600 and then it's applying damage over time. With the three times aftershock effect, the damage would be considerably more. Plus if it's on a big AoE, on a big group of adds, the damage to build up quite considerably for 25% supercharge is actually really good. Plus, the animation to it is just nice. It's just a nice loadout. Simple, easy and effective. So guys, I hope this loadout, powerpoints and even the guide to it will help you out and inspire you to maybe try Earth DPS out. But um, my words of wisdom is um, for T5 content be safe, play safe. And remember, if you don't finish at the top of the charts, it doesn't mean you are a bad DPS. You know, to be honest, you could finish second and you could still be the best DPS. So if you did like 2.5 million in the Nexus and the other guy did 2.7, you could still have been the best DPS because even though you would have finished second for DPS wise, you could have died less, used less power, needed less healing, you could have revived more. So, who would you ever have in your group? Someone who can still do 2.5k damage, hardly die and revive people, or would you ever have someone who can do 200k more, doesn't revive people and die shitloads? You know, so, you know, um, finishing top is not the most essential. I used to hate finishing second, but um, since, I'm being, since I've played Earth, I've mellowed out a lot, and I've got to say, I finished second a couple of times, I've even finished third. But I've um, done my damage. My group have never complained because I've done really good damage. I've revived. I hardly died. You know, so as long as you're doing your role, having fun, you know, and being a team player, it doesn't matter where you finish on the DPS charts. So I hope my words, you listen to them, especially for T5 content. Remember, don't put your group at risk just because you want to get an extra bit of damage in on a big group of ads, it's better to stay back and wait for the tank to aggro them, or do whatever, play safe. So anyway guys, I hope all of this um, will help you out for any Earth DPS or current Earth DPS that are thinking about using might. So until next time guys, thanks for watching.